Hello everybody, my name is Nathan Bishon and today we're going to learn Orconomics on Tabletopia. Orconomics is a 2-5 to five player game where players take on the role of cutthroat orcs trying to establish companies and complete quest cards to become the most profitable orc. Players will win by scoring 11 victory points through any combinations of quests and companies. But remember, you only have 10 companies, so you need to get at least one quest. Let's start with the setup. Now, on Tabletopia, a lot of this stuff is automated, but let's run really quickly on what the setup is. So the first thing you're gonna do is roll the dice to see who goes first. Um, in this case, we'll say that the blue player is going first and is now known as the Oracle. They will also receive this first player token. You then put the industry sectors in any order you choose. Um, it, each industry is a little bit different with the number that is rolled, the probability, the name of the industry, how much it produces in revenue and losses, a, a industry ability, and a set collection symbol. And down here you'll see that this is where the companies are placed once you own one. Each company chooses a color and takes all company tokens associated with that color. So we've got a blue player, a red player, a green, and a yellow player. We pour out all the skulls uh, so that all players have an easy reach. Um, this is your currency. A silver is equal to one, and a gold is equal to four silver. We then will deal out these three quest cards. We'll talk about these later. The starting player will start with five gold, and every player clockwise will get an additional silver. So the red player's got one extra silver, two extra silver for the green, and three extra silver for the yellow. Each player will also be dealt three industry cards. I already have three industry cards in my hand right here. And we're going to roll the forecast dice to see where the crisis token would go, which in this case is on seven. Now, starting with the Oracle player, each player will put out a company into any industry that they choose, and will go around until each player has two companies in sectors. It's a good thing to note that there can only be as many companies as there are players plus one. Each turn is split into four phases. Forecast, revenue and losses, auction, and development. We will go through each phase and explain how they play out. Phase one, forecast. In phase one, the Oracle pays off any loans that they have with one silver. A loan looks like this. For now, the blue player has no loans and doesn't have to pay anything. The Oracle then rolls the forecast dice and now moves the activation token to that sector. If the forecast calls for the same industry that was activated in the previous round, the embargo sequence is to be played. An embargo awards the Portis player one silver the crisis token is then moved clockwise, and the oracle re-rolls the forecast dice. The embargo sequence is repeated till any other industry is activated. Phase two, revenues and losses. Now all companies in the activated and adjacent sectors will now gain their revenue and losses depending on the sector. So in these sectors, it shows the goal of how much is obtained in the bottom left corner. So the green player in this case is going to gain two silver. And the red player is also going to gain two silver. Now at this time, 
any players that have companies in any of the activated sectors can take out a loan. A loan is when a player will flip over their company token and gain immediately one gold skull. But now, at the start of their turn, as the Oracle, they'll have to pay one silver for every loan that they have out. Orcs cannot pay off loans. The only way to get rid of a loan is to return it to your player pool or use sector abilities like this 12, Tourism. Phase 3, the auction. Now in this phase, companies are going to bid on the active sector to try to put a company in free into that sector. And starting with the first player, they have to bid at least one gold. The bid token will go around until all players either pass or they can't pay anymore. Then whoever wins the bid has to exchange the gold to place their free company. Now, in this example, let's say the green player got away with buying it for two gold. The green player can now discard one card of a matching industry and use it to act as one gold. So the green player would keep one of the golds, discard this card, and pay the other gold to now have a company in this sector. Stage 4, Development. In Stage 4, the Oracle is free to play one or more industry cards from their hand to do three main actions. Let's take a dive into what each one does, starting with the industry abilities. Each industry has a unique ability to that sector. A player that has a company in that sector, it costs them one card. So in this example, I'm playing as the yellow player. I can play this 1-9 to activate this banking ability. But because I don't have a company in sector 6, I need to pay two cards to activate this ability. The next two actions that you can do with industry cards have to do with startups, and they go kind of hand in hand. So let's talk a little bit about startups. A startup is when you place a company token at the top of one of these spikes that splits between two adjacent sectors. A startup does not count as a company and cannot gain money or have a loan taken out. How to create a startup is simple. You place, you discard one industry card to then place your token on either spike on either side of that industry. So for now, I'll do this. If another player were to have a startup in the same sector, you could also knock out their startup and return their startup back to their player pool. In future rounds, you can remove star any startups that you don't want anymore by returning them to your pool. Now there are a few ways to move your startups forward to create companies. Doing so, so we started that with that discarded six to start that startup. One way we can do is doing that third action by playing an adjacent industry to move that up one. In phase one, the forecast phase, if this six gets rolled, then this will also move up one. There's also an industry ability on five that has to do with moving all your startups one step forward. If two companies are on the same line of startups and you move your startup without moving the blue players, you will then swap the two startups and then now you take the lead. Once a startup has moved three spaces, you could decide to make it into a company into either adjacent sector. Once an oracle has finished playing their cards, 
they can either buy two more cards for the price of one gold. So we'll do that for the yellow player here. Or you can pass and end your turn. Once you buy cards, though, that ends your turn. You cannot buy cards and play them into the same turn. Players then will repeat these phases for their turns until 11 victory points have been gathered and one becomes the victorious orc. Let's talk quickly about quests and how they are accomplished. As soon as a player has completed the, t the challenge on the quest card, they immediately gain that card for one VP. And then a new card is immediately revealed. If a player has this card completed as it's revealed, or two players tie, the quest is immediately discarded, and a new quest is revealed until no one player has the challenge. That's it for this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, my name is Nathan Bishon, and I'm with Ares Games. This is Orconomics, and it just finished its Kickstarter. It's coming out in 2021. I hope you enjoyed, and have a great day.